Hi, my name is Konstantin Magnus and in this run through we will have a look at how you can procedural model a uh, fan, like a Chinese fan, and yeah, you have loads of controls and different values for thicknesses and offsets and things like that. So we are not going to do this from scratch this time, I will just want to save a bit of time in just explaining how it's done. So please just see this as a little break, uh, excuse me, like a little run through or a breakdown. And if you want the file, you can just go to the Otfos forums and download it. So the first trick, if you will, is to put loads of um, geometry on top of each other by creating a grid with only columns and making it the size in x direction zero. So all these lines are on top of each other. Now uh, the primitive node is rotating them around. Mm, to make this work the grid has been moved upwards a little bit and then the primitive node can rotate it the dollar PR divided by dollar NPR is basically a value ranging from zero for the first primitive up to one for the last. You have to subtract minus one and I just use minus 0.5 so it goes to the left side as much as it goes to the right side. And with a channel slider called angle we can open it up or closing it down. And the number of lines, of course, you can define here inside the grid. Now, one thing we do is we try to catch these beginning points simply by using a bounding sphere. This is not that much procedural, but it should work for this example and it's really easy to set up. And then we scale to negative space. So we're kind of shooting through, you can tell here. This would be scaling outwards and if I go negative I kind of can do this overlapping effect. And then I take any other line by just saying group range 1 out of 2 and I blast them off because I don't need them here. I need twice as much lines on the other um, branch which we are going to discuss later. The branch we are currently working on is for um, making these wooden pieces behind the fan. So now the depth is an effect which is used for actually offsetting those lines. And again we are using a um, dollar PR divided by NPR which you've seen before and we multiply it with our own slider. So next there was a bit of a problem because I wanted to extrude um, these lines later on but at the same time I wanted to make sure that they ex go, the extrusion goes in both directions. So in order to um, offset these lines in advance I needed uh, some tangent vectors. They are stored in the normals so you can see they just follow the direction and then with a cross product against uh, another vector uh, going along z so that's basically the depth direction we get these kind of directions that are rectangular to these um, lines basically and peak node here is there to compensate in advance what we extrude later. So without the peak it would only go to the right side but by peaking it first and then extruding it we can make sure that these wooden pieces are right on the lines that are running through the center. It's just a little detail so things really match up. And then of course our pieces are infinitely thin so we have to extrude them a little. And while extruding we make sure that there are still some tiny gaps 
uh, or at least no overlaps between those wooden, wooden pieces. And then there's a little transformation going in depth. And now maybe a bit more interesting is of course to put the actual paper between those wooden sticks. Uh, we were starting off here. Remember when we um, grouped these inner points? And we are also scaling, but this time outwards. So this was inwards, this is outwards. So the paper starts a bit above. And I needed UVs on each of these lines for later use. So we have UVX, which is again just um, starting with zero on the very left and ending up with 1.0 on the very right. And I was yeah maybe cheating a little by just saying the Y component of UV is just the length. So basically the distance from the center here, you can see where those zeros meet. So this may be 0 0.1 and this may be 1.0. I modeled everything in unit space so these kinds of things work right away without any uh, bounding boxes or so. Next I use the group we had before. Um, so I'm able to offset this. Let's have a look how it works exactly. Okay, here you can tell um, dollar $PR modulo 2 means only take any other primitive. So if this is equal to one, then you can do the offset. Otherwise it will be multiplied by zero so it doesn't move. So that way I just saved to use a group. Otherwise we have way too many nodes here. And the depth again is just a slider that's referring to the other depth node to this one. And then we can skin this. And the skinning works because the very left line starts with a zero and then it just uses the order one, two, three and so on to the last one. And the good news is, let's think this, and the good news is this has UV supplied because we applied those on those lines and the sweep excuse me, the skin node is not um, removing these attributes, luckily. So we can combine both. And you can tell that some normals are um, not correct here, but we will fix this later. First of all, I'm just removing groups I don't need anymore, just to clean it up a little. I move the whole thing um, to the center again using minus dollar centroid z so it's sitting right in the center and then I'm merging this with a little tube so we have basically an axis to rotate around and then by activating or recalculating the normals I get a proper view on our fan. All right and that's Basically, the fun part now, we can play around with all these things and yeah, basically have a look until our procedure breaks. But it doesn't. Thank you for watching.